Hi guys, this is your uh, lesson for October 20, 20th. We're going to be covering pages 91 through 98, and we're going to talk a little bit more about successful entertainment. <clears throat> okay, so there are several elements of party planning that you need to keep in mind when you are planning a party. So the first thing, of course, is keep the occasion for the event in mind. Is it for a birthday party? Is it a graduation? Is it a dinner party? Um, and from there, you're going to also want to jump to the idea of budget. How much can you spend on the budget? Uh, depending on how much you can spend for your party budget, it's going to uh, correlate with the size of the party space, the number of guests that can come, potential menu items. Everything is connected um, with how much money you can spend on your party. Uh, but you are going to also want to think about the type of service. Are you going to have a buffet style? Are you going to have um, people come in and serve your guests? Are you going to have um, people um, bringing in their own food, like a uh, like a um, wow? I can't think of the word. It's called a it's called a potluck. That's what it's called. Uh, but you have to keep that in mind. And also, you want to keep in mind um, your theme. So you're going to decide on the theme based upon whatever the occasion is. And then from there, you're going to have, uh, from the theme, you're going to have everything else sort of revolve around your theme. So, for instance, if you are going to uh, do, throw a baby shower, um, you might want to uh, do a theme in which you um, play off the parents' hobbies and preferences. So, for instance, if the parents are having a boy and the dad likes football, then you might want to do a football theme, baby shower. Uh, it's really a, an area where you get to just express your creativity. Okay, so invitations are so important to parties. They are um, going to be the preview for the theme of your party when to your guests and they're also going to give really important information regarding the party they're going to give the type of party it is the day and date it takes place what time guests need to arrive uh, the place of the name um, excuse me the name of the person giving the party um, also if you want guests RSVP which is optional you don't have to put that on the invitation but some people like to have that so they have a good idea of who is coming and who's not. Um, but if you do have an RSVP, you're going to place that in the lower left corner of the invitation with the contact information. And contact information can either be telephone or it can be uh, an address somewhere, something like that. So there's two types of invitations. There's informal invitations and there's formal invitations. And there is a difference between the two. Informal invitations can be creative and imaginative. Um, they can be silly, they can be, uh, you know, just lots of fun. And you're going to want to mail those one to two weeks in advance. Um, and some invites can be just so informal that you can just invite people over the phone. Um, and then the response is to informal invitations can be either given over the telephone or however you direct the guest to give it to you. It can be by writing and Really, if you receive an informal invitation, it's best to respond as requested. Formal invitations, on the other hand, are very different. They must be written in a very specific way. They must be handwritten or engraved in black ink. If you're handwriting it, you always use black ink, and you're going to use white or cream-colored cards, and you're going to center the information, and you're going to write in the third person. And you're going to write the information in a really specific way. You're not going to say, for instance, 6.30 p.m., but you would write half past 6 o'clock in the evening. So you can tell that there is a level of difference there. Um, you're definitely going to want to mail these two weeks in advance. And if you receive a formal invitation, you're going to want to respond promptly and as requested. So if they ask you to please respond by a written note, then you need to write them. If they ask you to respond by telephone, then you respond by telephone. And you need to really respond within two days of receiving the invitation. If you accept the invitation, you must go to the event 
the hostess is planning on you being there, and it's rude to suddenly stop um, the plan of going if you've accepted the invitation. Okay, so if you're in charge of the party, you're definitely going to want to plan the details. Details are so important if you want your party to go smoothly. So what's the most important element of any party? Well, it's the menu. It's very important to plan food that everyone will enjoy. You want to be aware of any allergies people might have and keep that in mind when you're cooking. Um, and if you want to try a new recipe, you always want to try it out before you actually serve it to guests. So you want to make it at least one time before. And this is simply because you want to have an idea of how long it takes to make. You want to have an idea of if there could be problems with the recipe. Or you want to know even if it tastes good. Because sometimes recipes can look like they taste good and then they don't taste so great when and you actually eat them. Um, keep in mind the type of meal service that will be used. Um, which, of course, refers to if it's going to be a buffet style, if you're going to have a sit-down dinner. It's important when you're planning the details to think about the space and have everything working around the meal service. So you're going to have things set up differently if you're having a sit-down dinner versus if you're having a buffet style uh, party. Um, when you're picking the menu, make sure you pick something that the guests will enjoy, but also something that's fairly simple for you because you don't want to be caught up in the cooking the whole time and not get to enjoy your guests. So make sure that you're thinking of yourself also when you are planning the details and not stressing yourself out too much. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about service details. Service details really have to do with uh, traffic flow for a party. Um, so like I said earlier, if you are going to have a buffet style or if you're going to have a sit down dinner, then you're really going to want to arrange everything, um, to have the best traffic flow at, um, the best traffic flow that you can possibly come up with so that guests aren't crowding with one another and that they feel comfortable. It's important for guests to feel comfortable. When the meal is ready, the hostess should leave the guests to the table and um, follow through with the proper etiquette for the type of meal service she has planned. So if she's planning to sit down dinner, then she will might direct guests to be seated. If she's planned buffet style, she might point out you know, where the line starts and, and different things like that. If you are doing buffet style, remember it, you might need to do additional planning just because you might have to rearrange the furniture in your house. And you're also going to want to have a plan for collecting dinnerware and trash after the meal is over. So maybe you take the plates yourself. Maybe you have trash cans um, for guests to throw trash away in if you're using paper plates. It just depends. Okay. Um, if you're the hostess, it's your job to graciously end meals. And to the way to do that is you're going to um, wait until there's a pause in the conversation, a lull in the conversation at the dinner table and recognize that the time has come for guests to leave the dinner table and you will push your chair back from the table as you rise and then you'll leave them to the next activity. Um, and also at, at, at that quiet time, you know, the lull in the conversation right before you get up from the table. That would be an excellent opportunity to thank guests for coming. It would be um, an excellent opportunity to just show your appreciation for the people in your, in your, at your party. Um, so, as I said, the, the hostess will rise from the table and she'll leave them to the next activity if the party is continuing. If it's just a dinner party and and, you know, desserts been served and there's a little conversation, then she might, you know, lead them to get their coats and um, help them to get ready to leave. Or, as I said, if the, the party continues and there's games, then she would lead the way to um, the, the games or opening the gifts or whatever it is that the party, um, ha whatever happens next with the party. Okay, so... Just to reiterate, 
planning is so important with parties and planning is going to make everything so much easier on you as the hostess. So you're going to want to make lots of lists, lists for groceries, things to bring to the party, things to buy, things to collect. Um, make sure you make a time management plan so that you can use your time to the best of your ability when you are planning uh, complete tasks that can be done ahead of time. So, for instance, you might want to clean your house a couple of days before the party and not try to clean everything the day of the party. That might be kind of stressful for you. <laughs> Okay, um, and it's also important to remember that as the hostess, you're throwing a party. There might be people there who don't know each other, and so introductions are so important because they help make people who don't know each other feel at ease. There's actually certain directions um, to show the polite way of introducing people. There's a list of them on page 97 and 98 of your book, but basically if you just want to remember the basic rules of introductions, you always are going to give honor to the person to whom honor is due. So in other words, if you're introducing a young person to an elderly person, you would introduce the elderly person first because you give honor to whom honor is due and we show respect to our elders. If you're introducing a man to a woman, you would introduce the woman first because of the fact that you are showing honor and to the lady as the um the as the uh, woman who is uh, worthy of respect if you are introducing people who have um like a doctorate like a doctor you would introduce the doctor first because it shows honor to his title things like that but um if you want specifics look on page 97 through 98 um those pages also talk about um when to shake hands, when not to shake hands. So, for instance, um, a woman, if she's being introduced to a man, usually is the one who either extends her hand for a handshake or does not. Um, but if for some reason the man doesn't know that rule and he holds out his hand, it's always polite to shake his hand. Okay, so let's um, do a little bit of work in our books. So you're going to do the section review on page 98. Thank you.